Dear students, now we are going to discuss satellite link analysis in detail. Satellite communication consists of two important links for its operation. One is uplink, the next one is downlink. So in this lecture video, we are going to cover uplink analysis and downlink analysis in detail. In uplink, the earth station is transmitting the signal, the satellite is receiving it. In downlink, the satellite is transmitting the signal, earth station is receiving it. Okay. So let's start with this uplink analysis. So in this one, we are going to use the parameter C by N naught. Okay, so the satellite link performance can be determined by using the parameter carrier to noise density ratio. So in general, it can be defined as EARP plus G by T minus losses minus K. Correct, we have already discussed about this in previous lecture video. But for uplink, we have to use the term capital U here. Correct? So here, the uplink carrier to noise density ratio is given as C by N naught is equal to EARP U plus G by T U minus losses minus K. Okay? So this carrier to noise ratio includes the earth station EARP. EARP means equivalent isotropic radiated power. So here we can consider only the earth station EARP. The losses means here the receiver feeder losses at the receiver side G by T ratio. K is nothing but Boltzmann constant. So consider this as the first equation. So this is the general uplink carrier to noise density ratio. Okay. So next we are going to analyze this ratio with certain parameters. So here at the satellite receiver side we can consider the effects of saturation flux density, input back off and high power amplifier. So here we have to analyze all these parameters to get the uplink carrier to noise ratio. So here saturation flux density. So in this one we have to take the TWTA. What is TWTA? Traveling wave tube amplifier. It is a high power amplifier which is used in satellite transponder. So it has to exhibit some power saturation. Do you all understand this one? In order to provide the power saturation in the satellite transponder, the proper flux density is required at the receiving antenna. So proper flux density at the receiving antenna can be obtained by maintaining the proper earth station EIRP. So here flux density is mentioned as psi m that is the required flux density to maintain the power saturation. So psi m is equal to EIRP of the earth station divided by 4 pi r squared. So in terms of decibel, we can write this expression as psi m is equal to EIRP plus 10 log of 1 by 4 pi r squared. Okay, so here the square bracket represents the value is in decibel. Okay, so here consider this as the second equation. So from free space loss, we can get the FSL. FSL means free space loss. We can consider the free space loss as 10 log 4 pi r by lambda the whole square. Lambda is the wavelength. Okay. So here we can simply take the reciprocal of this ratio. So here we can get 10 log of lambda by 4 pi r the whole power minus 2. Then we can move this minus here. Okay, so minus 10 log of lambda squared by 4 pi r the whole squared. So this term can be written like this lambda squared by 4 pi and here the another term is 1 by 4 pi r squared. Okay, so we can write this as minus 10 log lambda squared by 4 pi minus 10 log 1 by 4 pi r squared. So here this term. Okay, so in the second equation we need 10 log 1 by 4 pi r squared. So we are going to move this term to this side as plus and move this FSL to this side as minus. So we can get 10 log of 1 by 4 pi r squared is equal to minus FSL minus 10 log of lambda squared by 4 pi. Consider this as the third equation. In the next step we are going to substitute this third equation in the second equation. So here we can get psi m is equal to EIRP minus 
FSL minus 10 log lambda squared by 4 pi. Consider this as the fourth equation. Do you all understand this one? So 10 log 1 by 4 pi r squared is replaced with this term. So in this one, this lambda squared by 4 pi represents the effective area of an isotropic antenna. 10 log lambda squared by 4 pi is nothing but the effective area of an isotropic antenna in terms of dB. So it can be represented as A naught. Okay. Then the fourth equation can be written as psi m is equal to EIRP minus FSL minus A naught. So from this we can get EIRP is equal to psi m plus FSL plus A naught. So here we can consider only the free space loss. But for a clear sky conditions we can include all the losses together. Okay. So here. It can be written as EIRP is equal to psi m that is flux density plus A naught plus losses. Here we can exclude the receiver feeder loss. Okay. But for a specified saturation flux density, this EIRP can be represented with the term S. Yes. So EIRP S yes of U is equal to psi S yes plus A naught losses for uplink minus RFL. So consider this as the fifth equation. So this is the required minimum value of that EIRP to produce the proper flux density at the satellite transponder. So we have to consider this value for our link analysis whenever taking that saturation flux density at the satellite transponder. So it is very important consideration. Okay. So the next one is input pack off simply BO of I. So here satellite communication supports multiple carrier operation. So whenever we are talking about multiple carrier operation in amplifier, there are two important effects. One is the operating point of the amplifier must be packed off to a linear portion of the transfer characteristics mainly to reduce the effects of intermodulation distortion. So whenever multiple carrier signals are transmitting through this uplink at the time intermodulation distortion is a considerable range. So we want to reduce this intermodulation distortion so we can consider or we can take the specific value of this input pack off for multiple operation based on the single carrier operation. So here the at the station EIRP will be reduced by this specific input back of that can be mentioned like this. So uplink EIRP is equal to so saturated uplink EIRP minus input back of. So it is very very important because that at the station EIRP will also be reduced by this input back of. So we have to consider this value also for our uplink analysis. So consider this as the sixth equation. So next we are going to substitute this uplink EIRP value in the first equation. So in the next step, we are going to substitute the sixth equation in the first equation. So this is the first equation that is the carrier to noise density for uplink. So that is uplink C by N naught is equal to EIRP for uplink plus T by 2 uplink minus losses minus K. So here we are going to replace the uplink EIRP with the sixth equation. So here the sixth equation is EIRP S of U minus BOI plus G by T minus losses minus K. So next we are going to replace this EIRP S U. So EIRP S U with the equation fifth. Okay. So here we can replace this EIRP S with the term psi S plus AO plus losses minus RFL. Okay, then minus BOI G by T minus losses minus K. So here this EIRP S is nothing but this four terms. Okay, then we can cancel this two. We can get the value as C by N naught for uplink is equal to psi S that is the saturation flex density plus A naught that is the effective area of an isotropic antenna at the transmitter side. So G by T minus RFL minus BOI minus K. So this is very important expression for uplink analysis. Okay. So here we have to consider 
saturation flux density, losses as well as back off. Okay. The next one is at the station high power amplifier. So here in the suppling side, we have to consider this at the station high power amplifier for our analysis because we are going to transmit the signal to satellite. It is far away, right? So we have to consider this power fluctuation as well. So at the station HPA, that is high power amplifier, provides the radiated power and also the transmit feeder loss. Transmit feeder loss is represented as TFL. So here high power amplifier power is equal to EIRP minus GT that is transmitting antenna gain plus TFL. So that's what transmitted over the uplink. Okay. So since the earth station supports multiple carrier operation, its output also requires back off. But here we can take back off for HPA. Okay. So here we can include the power of HPA and also the back off for this HPA. So this is for saturated high power amplifier power. Okay. In the next one is downlink analysis. So downlink analysis, we are going to consider the satellite to earth station link. So here the satellite is going to transmit the signal, earth station is going to receive the signal. So we are going to consider the satellite EIRP value for our analysis. And here the losses between satellite to earth station and the receiver G by T. Okay, at the earth station. So in this one, the general carrier to noise density ratio is given as C by N naught of D. D represents the downlink expression, okay. That is equal to EIRP plus G by T minus losses minus K. So here this expression includes the satellite EIRP, the earth station receiver losses and then earth station receiver G by T ratio. So here the losses are calculated for the downlink frequency range. So in this one, we are going to consider the term bandwidth. Okay, so here bandwidth is nothing but the noise bandwidth. Here the carrier to noise ratio for downlink is equal to EIRP plus G by T minus losses minus K minus B. So next one is output back off. Okay, so for uplink, the input back off is important parameter for downlink. The output back off value is very important. So for downlink process, the output back off is not linearly related to the input back off. Definitely there is a difference. Okay, so this is for single carrier. This is a multiple carrier. So here we are going to represent this multiple carrier with respect to the single carrier. So here we can relate the output back of value with this input back of with the difference 5 dB. So here output back of is equal to input back of value minus 5 dB. So with respect to this one, so here the carrier to noise ratio for downlink is equal to EIRP SD minus back of for output G by T minus losses minus K. So this is the carrier to noise density for downlink analysis. Okay. Finally. The satellite TWTA output power. So here the at the station TWTA output is not required because that is the terminal point. So here we are going to consider only the satellite TWTA output. So it is the satellite power amplifier that is traveling wave tube amplifier. So it provides the radiated power and also the transmit feeder losses between the TWTA and the transmitting antenna in the satellite. So here we have to consider this TFL between this amplifier and this transmitting antenna along with this radiated power that is the output power of this TWTA that is represented like this. Here the TWTA power is equal to EIRP for downlink minus GT the transmitting gain plus TFL. Okay for saturated power output we can take the expression as PWTA plus back of output okay so this is for saturated output.